Father Savely wasn't always a priest. He had no connections with the church in the past. Neither he nor his surroundings ever thought he would become a clergyman. He used to work in the police and was a good investigator, but his honesty wasn't appreciated, not by his colleagues nor his superiors. When Sally was investigating a particular case, he was repeatedly threatened, but he always believed that as long as it was only about money, there wouldn't be any bloodshed. He was mistaken because large sums of money were involved in that case. Continuing the investigation meant digging his own grave. However, Savley believed in justice. One day, when he realized who was behind the whole scheme, he received a phone call. The caller said, Listen, everyone has something very important in life. For some, it's family, and for others, it's money. In our case, it's money and in your family. Understand that if we lose the money, you'll lose your family. Savely proudly refused and hung up on the caller. He was proud of himself and felt elevated. After lunch, he reported that the case had been solved. However, in the evening, as he was preparing to go home, he received a phone call with a dry, official voice informing him that his wife and son had been shot right in the playground. He couldn't recall what happened next, except for one thing that imprinted in his memory. He drove his car towards the person responsible for his misery, but lost control and crashed. Three months later, Savily was discharged from the hospital. His mother-in-law spat at his feet and asked, Tell me who needed your honesty? He started drinking and remained in a state of constant emptiness. He wished for only one thing, to die quickly. And in that state, he found Father Vasily behind the church. He stayed with Father Vasily for a month. They had long conversations in the evenings. Savely started helping around the church, chopping wood, clearing snow, and then he decided never to return to his previous world. Seven years had passed since that moment. Savely had been a clergyman for three years. He always tried to help not only with words, but also with deeds. He had managed to help people who were once like him, helping them stay warm and fed. Some individuals had changed a little, and he considered it his victory. Father Savely and the other people gathered. They would approach in ten minutes. Can't we make it faster? He looked in surprise at the woman. She turned out to be the mother of the young man being buried today. No, she was too young to be his mother. So it must be his stepmother and children. I'll be soon. Clearly, this lady, diligently wiping her eyes with a handkerchief, was trying to force out at least one tear. She was in a hurry, and that was strange. Where was the boy's father? Apparently, the family was not poor. Savly knew very well that it was not his business. His duty was to perform the rites and prepare the boy's soul while everything else was worldly matters, but he couldn't calm down for some reason. He approached the people, who were numerous in the church, mostly young people. He stood behind them, so no one would notice him. There was a young girl sitting by the casket, probably the deceased boy's fiancé or friend. But there was someone whose face couldn't be seen. She wasn't just suffering. She was in some kind of trance. Two tearful friends supported her. Savely looked around for the lady who had rushed him. She stood next to a young man who possessively held her waist. She glared at her watch with anger. Damn it, she even brought her lover here. Well, that's how it goes. It's obvious to a fool that Pasha didn't die for no reason. Do you know something? Yes, if only, 
but when his father died, the will stated that this expletive was the guardian only until Pasha got married. What do you think? He just, you died two weeks before the wedding. The young people, standing right in front of him, were talking. Sadly tensed, but then remembered that he hadn't been an investigator for a long time. His job was to help souls find peace. I will help the soul of this boy too. He isn't guilty of anything. Listen, should we involve the police? But what's the use? Don't you know who her lover is? He's our police chief's nephew. What a predicament. Pasha suspected something. And just a week before his death, I overheard their conversation. And Kadya was crying, begging him to give up some plan. A sword, you know. He just laughed and said that as soon as he exposes someone, they always calm down. Then they went inside, and I didn't hear what happened next. But I'm absolutely sure he was talking about his hateful stepmother, one of the young people said. Savily sighed. Nothing had changed in this world. Absolutely nothing. It was all lies, all cruelty. He did the right thing by leaving the power of it. The woman seemed noticeably nervous and savily moved towards Everything the hall. Everything was ready for the memorial service, but something was disturbing him. He wanted to delay the moment, as if something was unfinished for the boy. He glanced at the group of very young people, around 25 years old at most. He was about to step away from the group and take his place, but the girl who had been crying suddenly jumped up and immediately collapsed to the floor. People rushed to her, and the smell of ammonia filled the air. A woman approached. Ekaterina, stop creating a scene. Her voice echoed through the hall. Savily touched her arm. Please, don't speak so loudly. What? Get on with it already. How long can you drag this out? Excuse me, but if the funeral is causing some disturbance, it means that the person's soul hasn't completed its affairs in this world. What nonsense are you talking about? What soul? Don't spew this heresy at me. Get on with it, the woman said again. They helped the girl back onto the table, positioning her. Savely leaned closer to her. How are you feeling? he asked. She looked up at him, her eyes filled with immense pain. It was a gaze of pure agony. She silently lowered her eyes, and Savely finally made up his mind to proceed. The funeral service continued in its usual order. At one point, when it was required, he approached the coffin, leaned in slightly, and suddenly fell silent. He remained silent for a whole minute, still leaning. The girl, with a look of surprise and hope, stared at him as if expecting him to say that it was all a mistake, that Pasha was alive. What was the matter? The shrill voice of Pasha's stepmother reverberated once again under the vaulted ceilings, and Kaja kept looking at the priest. How she longed for happiness, how she loved Pasha. How difficult it was for her when they first met. Pasha's father was already ill. All the doctors gave different prognoses. Some promised three years, others one. He lived for one and a half, and then Keiji realized, though she had suspected it before, that money doesn't rule this world. Pasha's father had a lot of it, but it didn't help him at all. After Pasha's father's funeral, Pasha said, We need to get married urgently. She was so surprised. Pasha, it hasn't been long since your father's death. He looked at her and said, that's exactly what my father asked of me on his deathbed. He said it was the only way for me to be safe. If only they knew what awaited them. He didn't know, and Katya didn't know. But their father understood what he was saying. 
and today was proof of that. Savily didn't know what to do. For the first time in his life, he felt so bewildered. Ideally, he should continue with the funeral service, but he couldn't. And it was all because of what he had seen. If he hadn't worked in law enforcement, he wouldn't have paid attention to this detail. Ordinary people don't know what it is, but he did. He had even dealt with one of those things once. He looked at the deceased and saw that part of the mask had come off his face. Such masks were very expensive, and as far as he remembered, it was very difficult for an ordinary person to obtain them legally. But if you have makeup artists from the theater as friends, then maybe. Yes, he was a priest, not an investigator, but he couldn't mourn one person while another lay in front of him. Sally took hold of the edge of the mask and gently pulled. People gasped in horror as the mask came off easily, and now a completely different person lay in the coffin. He was a man in his 30s, and it was clear that he came from an unfortunate background. Savile straightened up, and people around him exclaimed. They were horrified. He saw Pasha's stepmother and her companion almost running towards the exit. He wanted to shout for them to be stopped, but then the church doors swung open, sunlight poured in, and in the rays stood the same guy, his face wrapped in bandages. Savly immediately realized that their attempt to kill him had failed. The girl began to rise slowly, and Savly managed to catch her as she started to fall onto her side. Her friends and companions should be here soon, he said, handing her over to them, saying, take her outside, and... The woman who had been urging him the whole time turned to her companion and shouted, why are you just standing there? Do something. He looked at her in astonishment, his eyes wide open. Me? What should I do? Are you saying that I caused all this myself? You deal with it on your own. I won't even get involved. She almost choked with outrage. I'm blaming you for all these ideas. You promised me that it would work out, that everything would be fine. I had no idea about the collapsed oak tree. I knew nothing about it. The woman swung her fists at her boyfriend, leaving him grimacing. However, the uniformed men quickly escorted them out onto the street. Pasha, it was him, he said. Now you have time to press charges against each other. He scanned the crowd and saw Katya. The girl stepped toward Pavel and fell into his embrace, begging for forgiveness. Forgive me, forgive me, my dear. I had to rush to the capital. You know our police won't investigate anything. I never imagined they would stage my death. Savly gave them a few minutes, then asked, What do we do now? Pavel looked at the group, at the funeral agency's car, at his employees. Have you been paid for everything? They nodded. True, it didn't happen right away because for about five minutes they stood there frozen, mouths agape. We need to mark this person and bury him. But if genuine police officers permit, everything has been paid for regardless. Just don't put a sign with my name on it. The man, covered in dust, was eventually buried the next day. As Savly bid farewell to this homeless man, it occurred to him that this might be his final requiem. There was just too much injustice in this world, and it needed to be fought against. A day later, he walked out of the church. It felt somewhat strange to realize that if he ever returned, it would only be as a parishioner. Savely turned around, and there stood a man one of those who had come with Pavel. Only now he was dressed in civilian clothes. He had seemed familiar to him back then, and now Savly remembered Sergi, 
If I'm not mistaken, that's correct. You were once my mentor. We should talk. What's the matter? The matter is that the police in your city will be practically disbanded. And we need people to take on leadership positions, people who won't give up and won't break. I know everything that has happened to you, and I'd offer my sincere condolences. But I wanted to talk about the possibility of your return, Sergei explained. Savly smiled slightly. There's a decent cafe nearby. It's been a while since I've had secular food. So what's the matter? Shall we go, Sergi? He smiled and walked along. A month later, someone rang the doorbell. Savly was very surprised and went to answer it. Only a few people knew that he was here. At the doorstep stood Pasha and Katya. Please forgive me. I used my father's connections to track you down. But what we found was, well, unexpected. What's meant to be will be. No, we've come to search and invite you to our wedding, Pasha said. Savily smiled. Well, so many events that he simply couldn't keep up with everything. Katya frowned. Just don't tell me you won't come. I won't say that. I will come. Someone has to bless you after all, Savly replied. If you enjoyed the story, please support me with a thumbs up. And to stay updated on new interesting stories, press the notification bell when you subscribe. Best wishes to all.